Hi, everyone. Please excuse uh, this delay. I was putting on my makeup. All right. There we go. Just take my little keyboard USB. Get rid of that. All right. Um, welcome, welcome everyone. Let me pull this in a little and type. Welcome. All right. So this is a remake of the live I did last week where I was playing the uh, song, I Put a Spell on You. And as I said, I better turn it off now because I don't want to get in trouble. Even though the singer had passed away, I got a copyright strike. And I think that might be my second one. So I have to be very careful because if they still have the three strike rule, then I could get suspended or I don't know what. So um, one of these days, maybe I'll get a little keyboard and sing before we start or figure out a way to have some copyright free music. But this uh, particular remake now is about the bindings again bindings um banishings and the update on my website i see i have one thumb up already that's wonderful i don't know where they went but um so bindings can be good you know like if i'm wearing shapewear to bind my abs or wearing a really tight bra to bind um, and give a little bit more of a view here <laughs> because I've heard that helps. Whew. I'm getting hot with all these lights on me. I might have to go turn up the air conditioner. So I would love to hear um, who's watching, who's come back. Um, how you're doing, how was your summer, you know, this is really a place I was hoping to have interaction, I don't really want to sit here and talk to myself, um, and I got back from the gym, and I would not have been late, 82, 54% humidity, if I had not done one more coat of mascara, boy, my eyes are getting blurry, I'm either watching too much TV and on the phone and all that, or I don't know what. So, um, wearing my witchy dress to talk about the bindings. Now, bindings can have a funny way of working like a hex or even a banishing. Because as I said last week, what I've discovered is that people who are behaving irrational, right? They're just not behaving right, are actually overcompensating for a weakness. And so these people are generally weak-minded. They do not have a lot of self-control or very little. And so rather than thinking they're strong-willed because they're being a bully, think the opposite. Bullies are cowards, right? If you have a situation where you don't need to do a divination to see how it's going to turn out, let's say, for example, the Two of Swords came up in the tarot and it's telling you, it may not work right away. You might have to do a follow-up or do something else in addition. Um, then you would go ahead and start working on that person. So whether it is a supervisor who's micromanaging you to death 
who's really discriminating against you and you can't prove it because it's just subconscious and it's, you know, it's, it's, they've got their excuses, right? As to why so-and-so is getting more favors and you get sent home or whatever. Then you're going to go ahead and do some type of a binding. Now you can make a doll like I have done. It's been very, very effective. I've done that about, I think I said I've done it four times so far. And so the more you do something, if that's the style of binding that you want to do, stick with it. Okay. My first one did not work right away. I also had to follow up as I usually do in the mundane process of complaining to the proper authority. And then if it goes nowhere, I know that I've done everything non-magically. Okay. And so now it's in my hands and I have to work with my thoughts and project my thoughts to that person in their subconscious mind or, you know, and where they're subconscious prejudices towards you um, to stop the behavior. We don't care what all of the reasons are. We just want to stop the behavior. Okay. Um, I did not make a doll for a supervisor. I don't know why, but I did take a black candle and I put chili powder around the bottom and I wrote on there what I wanted to happen and it shattered when it got near the bottom. My daughter called me and said, Mom, the candle burst and there was fire. <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, go get salt or baking soda or flour or something and snuff it out. She said, yeah, it's okay. I, I, I got it. I think she put water or something. And so there was a big burn there on the coffee table. So even with a five to seven day vigil candle, you want to have a heat safe plate or a big candle saucer, you know, for candles uh, to have it on in case it shatters like that. Now, years ago when I first got started, um, I had met someone and we were working together. So, you know, we were interacting and she was telling me things and I was picking up on her energy. And I believe my spirit guide gave me a dream about her and what was going on with her and her sister. Um, then she asked me if I would do a spell. I said, she asked me, do you do a spell? And I said, well, yeah, I've been, you know, doing money magic and I think at that time I had done the nutmeg spell where I wrapped some red thread around the nutmeg and was speaking to somebody's head to stop calling me. And that's when I discovered that I had developed a very strong ability to direct my thoughts and focus them very, very strong and do bindings and do banishings. Um, I recently discovered that Saturn is in my ninth house, which corresponds to it, it's in the house of Sagittarius, which corresponds to Jupiter, and Jupiter rules my entire chart. Uh, Saturn is the Lord at my 10th house of job and career. So in the matter of receiving higher knowledge and doing workings that relate to Saturn, that is basically my job, you know, to be a human telephone. <laughs> And yeah, you know, I've had to wait all these years to finally figure that out, even though I have the North Node in Virgo. That just really relates to how I um, have other people respect my personal space and don't give too much. Don't believe, you know, everything somebody says when they come to you hysterical and crying. So that's a life lesson that I've had to learn. So what I did was I told her, if you will buy all of the supplies, I will do what I can. And so I pulled out a spell from Silver Raven Wolf's book. And I took the two candles uh, because her sister was underage and her boyfriend was older and involved with drugs. And then I bound them together 
And I did some other things, of course, and called on my guides, put chili pepper and whatever else I think it said to do in the book. Um, and after I lit it, I think I let it burn for a little while. I took scissors and I cut it. So what happened was it worked on them uh, to magnify their irrational behavior. The 17 year old was just wanting to, despite the parents, you know, be with this guy. And when they thought that they could avoid getting caught, they switched cars. And because the parents had put out an APB, they caught him driving the parents' car. He got arrested, went to jail, and then she went home where they could at least try to talk some sense into her. So she didn't take the car out anymore. But the problem was not completely solved. But I did have a dream about it, and I saw somebody... I told her I saw a bookkeeper giving money. I don't know what it was. And she said, well, you know, he got arrested, but his daddy bailed him out. So this is how a binding can work. A banishing can also work in a very similar way. I am offering black salt, my formula for black salt, on my website now because I've had at least half a dozen people comment and email me about their problems with their neighbor. And one of them paid a practitioner, and for whatever reason, it didn't work. Um, others have tried black salt, but they're not consistent with it. And because people have not developed the focus like I have, you know, and they don't have the time or the desire to be consistent and try to do it secretly, then I have provided instructions and my own formula on my website. Now, I tried to show my website on my phone last week, but it was just not really coming up. I took a picture of it on my community post. If you are following, you should be getting that in your newsfeed on your phone. What I've done is save one of the pages of my website to my phone. Boy, there is no air circulating in here at all. Where, what does it look like? Oh, yeah, it says Dark Defense. I saved the page where it's called Dark Defense. And I have... says casting cauldron so i'm keeping the name the same all across my internet social um this is dark defense powder and there's my picture with my hat my most popular youtube video and that's the truth it's got over 4000 views now so you know like i said last week um it's unfortunate that so many of us do live in apartments whether they're nice or they're not. We're all packed in like sardines in a can. I have a big unit, so I have to share walls with not two tenants, but two and a half. I have one above me, then I have a, a bedroom above my bedroom, which I did not want. And then I'm sharing a bedroom with a wall next to me with an older couple, but he just snores. So I'm not hearing the headboard banging against the wall. <laughs> oh, gosh, I look so blurry. Am I blurry to you? Is it just my eyes? Oh, my goodness. You need to let me know. All right, so... Oh, good, the air conditioner just came on. <laughs> There's different ways to do banishings. And again, you want to think carefully before you do a banishing because if you're trying to banish a neighbor, um, you're going to have to think about who's going to come in after that. Once you've done the banishing, then you have to do an attraction to bring in the type of neighbors that you would want. Those two things go together. You first banish negativity and then immediately after, 
you bring in on the waxing moon the um, like a Jupiter candle or the sun to attract and you focus on that with another candle lighting that for like five days or so. So with bindings and banishings, you need to look at the phase of the moon and it for banishings, it would be, I think the dark moon's very good for justice. It really is. However, I suggest one or two days before the onset of the dark moon, the waning phase is its strongest, is its strongest at the last part of it, which would be what? The second week. We've got two weeks of waxing, two weeks of waning. Okay. So, you know, the law is not always just, and there are not ordinances or rules or laws or even animal control that can help you sometimes get rid of annoyances that are like Chinese torture. Now, I think the binding I did for the really, really unstable, obnoxious man upstairs was very effective in getting him out sooner rather than later. He seemed to be here. That's the thing. He seemed to be here for a couple of weeks after that, but he was quiet. So it is possible. Management told whoever the primary person on the lease is that you, you, um, I've received too many complaints and they might've got an infraction and you have to take your parties elsewhere or use the community room. And, you know, in my case, like I said, the police don't come anymore. This is a nice place, but I called last year and the police never came. I took a video of the people that were really obnoxious up on the balcony. And, I mean, it took over six months for management to finally decide after three infractions that they were going to evict them. She told me one day, oh, I can't do that today. I've got to evict someone. So yeah, you know, they take their sweet time and there's reasons for that. A manager is hired to keep a percentage of apartments rented at all times or they lose their job. And now my manager tried to solve problems. Barking dogs were encouraged to have collars. So, you know, they'd get a gentle zap when they barked. But people lie. And the people above me were lying. And she said, I'll tell them to... Um, Maybe turn it, turn it up if it's not working at all, which it wasn't. Or try another model. They didn't. They simply didn't care. They were in the process of looking for a place to buy. And, you know, they behaved long enough to so that they only got, you know, towards the end there, after almost about nine months or so, they got maybe a third infraction. And then it would take another 30 days to get an eviction notice. So, you know, they timed it perfectly and they had their little loud hooting and hollering game night before. So I'm done with apartments, but it's very frustrating. It's very difficult. At some point, I'm going to have to try to find a place that is a really nice neighborhood uh, with people that don't, you know, sit out on their front porch or their deck and have loud drunken parties and people in upper class neighborhoods don't and if you're in an HOA with a lot of rules you know that might be what I need in the meantime I think that all of the things I've done have enforced and proven the power of our thoughts and learning to use them and direct them towards a purpose and use accessories. I had a friend who said, magic is prayer with props. Okay. Everything begins with the thought. And if you're not acting too quickly, um, you're going to be preserving. Self-preservation is a good thing. Okay. Standing up for yourself. Now, some annoyances are difficult to see exactly what's going on. Um, 
And so, you know, what I have, nobody's mentioned it, but what I've had recently going on over here has been very confusing, but it's not the first time I've had a young man who wanted to, you know, <laughs> benefit from my stuff. Um, anyway, I finally did a binding on him because he was really obnoxious and he ended up threatening me, as I mentioned on my video, when I asked them nicely one night at 11.30 to please take their party inside. He showed his true colors, and every time I asked him to get out of, to stop coming in my yard to play ball, he just had this stupid little smile on his face and walked back to his mom's house. <laughs> so, and I've been watching um, another one of these shows, you know, about relationships that are, they just, they just turn really, really bad or crazy and. Yeah, it's just really, really interesting <laughs> and shocking. A little bit scary, I have to say. A little bit scary. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, I've had to exert myself and call on management and write a little note like I've done before and put it on the windshield. And, you know, because we live in a place that does have a lot of rules in the lease and they're bringing the hammer down because evidently she she's the new manager here and she's getting a lot of complaints. So they're going to start towing cars <laughs> if you decide you just want to park in front of somebody's door. And um, I, I'm really glad for that. I'm really glad for that. So... As far as um, tarot cards, okay, the accessories that you might want to add if you're doing um, a binding or a banishing, the tarot card you would use would be the one, which is the, I think it's the Eight of Swords, where the woman is bound and she's got all these swords around her and her eyes are covered so she can't see. That's a card that you could put next to your working as you are working. Um, and then I have several videos on how you would really go through the process and make it very powerful. It helps to have a name. But there's been two inc inc incidents where I didn't have a name, but I had all the other information, the address, the uh, name of the complex, the car they drove, you know, my neighbor next door to the left on the west, you know, this just a lot, a lot of details. And I would imagine them. And so that's what was on my mind throughout the whole process. Now, cord cuttings, okay, that's something that I tried to talk about last week, and I think I kept calling it, I don't know what I called it, but anyway, um, this is when you would take two black candles and wrap them in cord and then separate them so that there's some of the cord in between the two. Um, this is for you to psychically disconnect your cord to the other person. And ladies, especially if you really have a stalker, this is something that is important for you to do at the same time that you're doing um, a spell. Well, you're going to do this spell to cut the psychic cords. Anything else you're going to do to bind them, of course, or banish them, or do one after the other, you need to get rid of all of the psychic emotional cords that are attached. Okay. This goes on. The longer it goes on, the stronger that cord is going to become. Now this goes along with burning a black candle on Saturday, just to banish negativity in general. You know, we come across so many people and stuff in the air when we go out. 
that we should come home and probably burn a candle, a black candle, just at least for a few minutes after we've had a cleansing shower. We imagine, you know, we're covering ourselves with a white light and washing off all of the negativity and then burn a black candle to banish negativity and then put it out before you go to sleep. I have a viewer who told me that she worked on getting rid of a bad curse, she said, that stayed with her for years by practicing the black candle every Saturday and focusing on banishing all that negativity. So along with her will and the candle, which was supporting her will, she began to feel lighter and she began to be more productive. Things began to start going better for her. That's an awesome testimony. And if you're not able to throw the black salt, like I said on my website, um, there's other ways that you can work. You can work remotely with a candle and you would put the salt around the base of the candle after you put some chili powder. Uh, you do not want to burn black salt. It's not, doesn't have resin, so it's not for burning. It's for throwing powders. Um, work with air and black salt works with air. It's like a powder. So yeah, that corresponds to your thoughts. So um, yeah, you can get a black candle and burn it for a few minutes every Saturday. I'm telling you frustrations and whatever else is going on because don't wait till you get sick or things are really are going bad like me when I get when I get home and I've had a classroom classroom full of um, active little ones and whatever else is going on all day I definitely need to banish all those emotional things that happen and anything that still might be lingering on me or within me And I do take a shower with a lavender scented shower gel, but, um, you know, I, I probably should, I should be buying black candles. I'm, I'm using Temu, T-E-M-U. Today I searched and they have a whole box of candles I can buy for a really good price. I'm not going to have time to be running all over town to buy stuff anymore. Um, I'm starting to order things online more and more. So keep a box of black candles, burn it for a few minutes. And if, if you are being stalked, if you are being harassed, whether it's a man or a woman, you know, and this person is obsessed with you and they're bothering you and they're coming around all the time, they followed you. <laughs> There's some crazy stories that were on the, the TV shows. Then, uh, it, sometimes it's weird the, how certain things do work out. Um, one guy got a restraining order on this girl, and she ended up going through his garbage, getting his father's information, and then going and flirting with him and seducing him. And the father, who was an older man, asked her to marry him. And apparently after that, she calmed down. So... <laughs> Yeah, he said uh, he seemed to be happy. But his life was kind of thrown into disarray. Even though she had uh, him fired, he went and achieved his goal of getting his own business. So life is funny sometimes, but if you're really and truly being stalked and harassed and emotionally disturbed, you know, or your sleep is disturbed and, and things like that, then um, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to either go to a magical practitioner that's very good at bindings and banishings. Uh, but you have to be patient too, because like I said, the guy upstairs seemed to be home for a few weeks, but he was quiet. So they can, with a binding, I found that they seem to hunker down and stay where they are for a few weeks. They either get sick 
because the illness gets magnified. Um, my neighbor who was doing drugs had gotten out of rehab and I think he got COVID. So the banishing of the negativity might have caused this breakout in him because obviously he was on drugs and had a bad diet. But, you know, you have to be prepared for the fact that they're going to hunker down. And the client that I had last year was asking for a variety of things, really. And I just didn't know at the time to say, well, look, I can only work with one issue at a time. I'm going to bind to the bully. Okay? And it worked. He stopped waiting for her, flashing his flashlight in her eyes. But she complained that he was home. He's home all the time. And she kept calling me. I said, well, is he coming in your yard anymore? No. Is he flashing his flashlight in your face? No. Well, then it's working. I made a poppet and I did a binding. But she doesn't understand anything about magic. So I have to make that clear as well. Um, it's not Harry Potter magic. You know, someone, she kept saying she wants them gone. And I didn't think to say, are you asking me for a curse? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't do that. I don't just curse someone so that they lose their home and they have to go. Um, no, you're telling me you're being harassed by this man. And so we started to find out that he was partially angry about the property line. So I encouraged her to find her surveyor sheet. And when she found it, the surveyor came out. Sure enough, he was wrong. And he had to move his fence over. In the meantime, he had been putting graffiti all over the brick fence that she had. And then she put up a tar, like a blue tar, to go on the wire fence. He pulled it off. And there's just some things you can't seem to get anyone to do anything about. Um, so a binding can really served to keep someone there. He did end up getting laid off. He had bad behavior and he was getting complaints about work. So he eventually, he did get laid off like within a month. And so then he was working on the house, fixing the roof. So she complained about the noise and all the debris in the yard. I mean, you know, you've got to accept some of these things that are going to happen. If you want somebody to stop doing one particular thing, they're going to get busy with another one, or they're going to hunker down and be home because they're sick. You know, you're bringing up this negativity. Hi, please say hello. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get on and do the lives. I'm probably going to do them once a month. I have not taken a job yet this week. Uh, got a call on Monday, couldn't get up. Uh, got a call today, couldn't get up again. Um, I'm just not going to be able to exercise one part of my body two days in a row. And, you know, I'm sitting here talking to myself. So for that reason, I could just make a video sitting over there in front of my set instead of here in front of the Chromebook that for some reason today looks incredibly blurry. Am I blurry to you? Oh, oh my gosh. I see somebody said something. It's so blurry. Oh my gosh. Witches and warlocks worldwide. Hello. Oh my gosh. A new person. Hello. Let me see if you're telling me if I look blurry. I am looking for a spell caster to get rid of a troublesome. Did that say roommate? Roommate. <laughs> okay. Well, um, as I've been saying, I have to be careful about how I work with people from now on in the future. Um, especially people that I don't know. Uh, I'd have to spend quite a lot of time looking at the tarot cards to determine, you know, if there is no truth. 
And then my price would be my price, whether it works the way you want to or not. Um, you may need to go back and listen to what I have described about how things can work. I think you could probably work very easily with the black salt. If you go to my website, it is casting-cauldron.mailchimpsites.com. My formula, it's in a bag, um, and I posted a picture of it on my community posting board. And there's different ways that you can use it. I give instructions on my homepage as well as on the page that says dark defense. And so I would definitely, definitely buy the powder first, okay? That is my suggestion. I have 23 years of practice and experience. Purchase some of my black salt. It has my thoughts attached to it. I've been successful in using it in different ways. And then, like I said, um, you have to understand that this can make someone who's already behaving irrational kind of uh, be magnified. And you just have to stand back, you know, and say, all right, it's working. It is causing this person <clears throat> to act even more irrational, okay? Now, it's a small bag, but that's enough to last you quite a while. Do you offer readings and consultations? Yes, I've been thinking about having a consultation first, but I don't want to give my phone number out. This was a problem with the first client that I had. She kept calling me. So it would be probably through email, I guess. Um, and uh, it would be very short, very brief, you know, just have to give me a brief uh, sum summarization of what's really the problem, what's really going on. With all my years of experience and understanding human nature, sometimes I can just say, oh, you know, this is what's going to happen, <laughs> you know, just because I've been around the block a lot of times. I respect that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and, you know, the thing is I do readings anyway. Like I said, after I talk to someone, I'm going to look at the cards. And I am going to let my spirit guides show me what they want to show me. Now, with that client, I looked at the cards and I told her I had this dream and I saw this. And I mean, I saw a whole bunch of stuff. It was amazing. I saw this bully neighbor's wife where she was working, how she was acting, what she was doing. She was conducting uh, a play where people were dressed up like animals. <clears throat> and uh, there were some people sitting in the back that were complaining about her. And she was dressed all in black. And she was pretty floored at everything that I had seen. But later on, as she, you know, she became more and more frustrated with them still being there. She, she would say, well, why did you dream about her? <laughs> so all of this, that's amazing, flew out the window. Um, and so for that reason, I'll probably have to limit the number of communications through email as well. Um, but I mean, like I said, I really recommend that you order my black salt first. Now, I have closed down my Astarte Apothecary, my Etsy store, so I could just go and be back on MailChimp under Casting Cauldron and start offering the things that I make there. And until I can afford a store, I'm just putting a PayPal link. So if you want to order the black salt, you would send me the amount of money that 
is listed for that size bag right now on the website to PayPal. And it's the paypal.me for this channel, paypal.me forward slash casting cauldron. And once I see that I've received the money, we'll have your name, I think, and your address. I can just throw it in the mail and send it to you. And then you would read everything that I've written on my website. Let me know if you found my website and you are reading it. I have PayPal. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Good. You already have PayPal. So that would be a problem. Yeah, and anybody who doesn't have PayPal, just sign up for PayPal if you really want to get what I have to offer. And you are really going to be practicing what you are apparently already studying and learning. And uh, that is that thoughts are things. Everything begins with a thought. You're going to use your thoughts to direct them in a different way rather than sitting at an altar or going outside. You're going to use your thoughts as the element of air. That I have, you know, put everything in that black salt formula. And I will also be thinking of you uh, when I mail it to you. So before we leave, I guess if you can let me know if you have found my website and you are able to navigate it and see, because my old website was still coming up when I was working on it last week. And, but yeah, um, and then if you hit the three dots on the upper right hand corner, you can save the home page or you can save the dark defense powder page. So you'll have that on your home screen. Okay. So I would say that is step one for you right now. Then you have to think about the fact that you're going to be left without a roommate and you're either putting feelers out, thinking about who might be your next one, who could be a better choice, or whether you want to live alone, how are you going to do that? Or if in fact you are willing to move because you can't afford to live there on your own and you're just not seeming to be able to really get another roommate. So it can work in all sorts of ways, okay? But either way, if, you know, it's really, really not going the way you really need it to, then your peace of mind is more important, okay? I found it. Yay! Thank you so much. No more. Recommends the sky is a nightmare <laughs> and a roommate from hell. Oh my goodness. I learned my lesson. And yeah, you know, life is full of those. So if you're the type of person who needs to be alone, then, you know, it's happened for that reason, maybe. Or really sitting down and defining as much as you possibly can the type of person that would be much better as a roommate. Maybe reach out to uh, some of your close magical friends, you know, but really sit down and define it and work on that. And then you could couple that with burnish, uh, burning a black candle uh, for a few minutes. And What's the, I think we're in a waning phase of the moon right now, aren't we? Let's see. Looking at my moon face app. Today. 
Oh, of course. Today's a full moon. It's a blue moon. Okay. Well, if you have a black candle, you could start with that until you get the powder, the black salt. And yeah. Write a little petition on a piece of paper with all the pertinent information, his first and last name, and your desire, and whatever else is going on. I mean, I've combined several different things when I have written my my uh, bindings and banishings. Kind of do both. I say your evil deeds are revealed, or you are arrested, you know, and you are stopped. <laughs> So, yeah. I don't have access to a black candle. Can I use white or light? Um, or some, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You could even take a non-toxic Sharpie and paint that candle with that. But yeah, I would say that's a staple that every witch or warlock should have is a black candle along with black salt. So like I said, I'm going to be ordering from Temu because they've got nice prices on a whole box of black candles and multicolored candles and I'm having to just order things more and more online and um, so yeah if you see the price for the bag I have right now then go ahead and submit that cost uh, to PayPal and I'll get it in the mail and you work with that every single day through the waning moon. And like I said, the waning moon gets stronger as it is getting closer and closer to the dark moon. So you have to be creative about how you're going to do it. And of course, it has to be done very covertly. You only need a very, very small amount. They don't need to see it. Okay. And, uh, if you had access to a shoe, <laughs> but really basically just where they're going to walk. So this can be a little tricky. You've got to be very careful because you're walking around there. You're sitting there also. And uh, we, we don't want it to affect you in a negative way. See, so you're going to have to be thoughtful and creative about how you do this to affect him. And like I said, um, Accept what happens if, in fact, you need to live alone and you can't stay there anymore um, or whatever else you might decide that you need to do uh, to stay there. Okay, and uh, keep notes. Get yourself some type of a little inexpensive notebook and starting tonight with you writing that, and writing out your desire on a piece of paper. Don't under underestimate the power of a pen. You know, some people think a few strokes of a pen is really nothing. You're making an impression on your subconscious mind. Let's see. He is from Haiti. Oh, and practices as well. <laughs> he is. Sorry, I'm laughing. Um, I'm extremely advanced, so yeah, my stuff is powerful. And uh, he is a squatter. I live in the and the law is yeah in New York City supports them. Like I said, the law is not always just, 
And if there's not a manager supporting you and there's not a law or city ordinance, you know, to help you, like with me, I took matters into my own hands. And on this path, we learn um, thoughts are things. You're going to be also, I think, putting up a wall. You know, you can practice putting whatever kind of other defense around you, maybe a white light or something. But uh, do you have a black pebble or stone or hematite or anything or onyx? There's so many good things that we learn when we go through this kind of crap, right? It's just that when we're going through it, it's like, oh my God, what? Yeah, so I would carry a little black stone in your pocket to reinforce your energy and keep negativity away. Uh, put a little bit of the black salt in your pocket, okay? So, and it's... Right now, it's only $10 for that little bag. And as soon as I get your payment, I'll put it in the mail. All right? So we'll start there. Um, now, my email for this channel is modernmagic. 88 at gmail.com. That's magic with a K. I will let you send me a very short message, a couple of sentences, telling me your name, okay? And what aspect, not aspect, but what, um, don't scratch on my sofa. Um, you know, that way I can kind of connect to you and, and, and think on you. Okay. And I might, whatever comes up in the cards, if my spirit guides decide they want me to have a dream about what's going on with you, then I'll be able to give you a message. And then after that, I can only ask for a donation, you know, because <laughs> I just don't know what or how exactly is going to work. And, um, but those are things you can do for additional protection. Okay, we're headed to my website now. Wonderful. I generally get some kind of a notification from PayPal. You know, this blue moon is good for healing. Guys, binding and banishing a bad situation is a form of healing. I've said that before. Many people, though, they just don't feel like they should use their willpower, women especially. And sometimes we just don't know what we want. Yeah, my link to my PayPal is right there on the Dark Defense powders page. And if you click it, I clicked it and it took me straight to the PayPal. All right. So with that, um, I think we have everything that you need. And uh, the email is modern, modern magic 88 at gmail.com. And that's magic with a K. So, yeah, if you want to drop me a very short little line telling me briefly your name so I can focus on you. And in the course of me reading the cards before I go to bed, um, if my guides want to show me something, I don't know when, but, uh, you know, I'll send you, drop you an email. Okay? All right. 55 minutes. Well, I'm very glad that you were brought here and that we have met and that uh, 
you've reached out and you have some form of support and you're going to start first working for yourself on your end first. And that's generally what I ask my other clients to do anyway. Um, so with that, I will look for that and I will wait to get my notification. And when I do, I'll put that in the mail and uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens after that. Okay. Um, I want you to think positive about what you do and the fact that you have reached out now to an experienced practitioner who is supporting you and that you're not alone in this and that something positive is going to work and change with all that you're doing now. Okay. So writing the petition and the desire and putting it in your drawer and whatever else. Okay. So with that, um, just read everything I have on the home page and on the Dr. Fence powder page. And I'm very glad that I'm going to be able to assist in helping someone and uh we're fi you find out more of what you want in life <laughs> okay so with that i'm going to say so long i've got to go have a bite to eat before i go to bed and thank you very very much uh, look forward to hearing from you and I, uh, might, I might come on next Wednesday if I'm not too tired after work. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. So long.